what's up and welcome back to the first Coe's Kitchen in this new Coe's Kitchen. Today we're gonna to be building our grocery list. Do's, don'ts, things that you might wanna consider buying organic, and some eco-friendly tips in terms of feeding yourself in a way that also helps keep the planet thriving. So it's like a mashup between a gist slash adulting 101 video and a co's kitchen. I feel like no one really ever fully taught me this, and I learned how to basically systemize getting groceries over the last few years of living on my own. So without further ado, let's jump in. So first things first, I'm gonna pull up my grocery list here. I use a MacBook and an iPhone, so those notes are synced on both. So I will usually do my grocery list on my laptop, and then when I'm at the store, I just pull it open on my phone. You'll see that mine says the last time it was updated is March 14th, so I'm gonna go ahead and update that. And then I started a new table here that you'll see that I'm basically going to fill in as the year goes. What was available that's in season in Ontario and filled it in for March and April. And then I just filled in the early summer one just the other day. Apples and rhubarb are like the only fruit in season right now. So I'm still buying things like bananas, organic frozen fruit for smoothies and things like that. And I'm gonna fill that graph in as the year goes on and I continue to fill it in with things I know are in season. Then scrolling down, I just kind of have an overview of what's in my fridge and pantry. This isn't necessarily what I actually have stocked. Fruit, vegetables, starchy veggies, whole grains, healthy fats, legumes, seeds, nuts, and nut butters, plant-based milks, seasonings, condiments, plant-based proteins, and then coffee, tea, slash water. So before we get to the checklist, I'll show you one last thing. I keep these little meals of the week. Depending on your diet, you might not need to get too ahead of schedule in terms of what you eat. So here I just kind of write out what I would like to eat for the week just so that I know what I'm getting when I'm getting my groceries. So normally for breakfast, I have my smoothie to break my fast in the morning. Then I have lunch around one o'clock. And this week it's been avocado and tempeh bacon toast. And then for dinner, I've just been making protein pasta, which is just like a pasta with a protein and a sauce on it really easy, um, especially if you're living alone. I like to eat the same things over and over again. I can do that for a week and then switch it up the following week and not get sick of it. But if you're someone like gets sick of eating the same things every day, you can definitely come in here and be like, okay, like some days I'm gonna have a smoothie and some days I'm gonna have oatmeal, you know? And then for lunch, I'll have avocado bacon toast or maybe I'll have soup and salad <laughs> and a sandwich. And then dinner, I can have protein pasta or um, burrito bowl. From there, it kind of makes it easier when you move down to the next step, which is our checklist, to make sure you're getting all the ingredients you need for those things. I can't sit here and tell you how to eat. I am not a nutritionist or a dietitian or a doctor. I'm just a girl living her life over here that's sharing her adulting tips with the world. So take this with a grain of salt, but I also like to do the 80-20 rule in the sense of Monday to Friday, I eat pretty healthy. Like, do I sometimes have what I want throughout the week? Yes, but it's more rare than on the weekends because Friday to Sunday, I'm way more lenient. I eat more processed foods. So under here, I might write something like we Weekend and then be like, okay, like this week I was really craving vegan mac and cheese. So I'll put this here to know to pick it up so I can have it on the weekend. And then that way I'm getting my hankerings and my cravings in because I know processed food isn't good for me, but I also really enjoy eating it sometimes. Then I know that when I have my weekends coming up that I can just like go out and like get my vegan mac and cheese or my vegan mozzarella sticks or my vegan pizzas or burger and fries from a restaurant. Then through the week, I feel good like eating my good foods knowing that I'm not hardcore or intense about it. So scrolling down, underneath here we have my entire grocery checklist. Do I pick everything on this list up every single week? Absolutely not. When I'm ordering my groceries, I come into the kitchen, I open up my fridge, I open up my pantry, and then I look at my list and I see like what do I need and what do I not have any more of? And then as I go through the list, I'll be like, okay, I'm out of spinach, I'm out of frozen fruit, I'm out of nut milk, I need some coconut yogurt, I need some decaf coffee because I'm out. Adding the seasonal vegetables or seasonal fruit that is local in your area if you're trying to do that. And then weekend, which like I explained on the weekend, I like to have what I want. So I'll pick up my wine, I'll pick up beer, I'll pick up like a vegan treat. For instance, this week, it's vegan drumsticks. Then scrolling down, I just have a staples list because these are things that I don't necessarily need to purchase a lot, but things that I'll notice myself running out of. And then gist in store is kind of just like the other areas of the grocery store, like toilet paper, body wash, kibble for Bentley, 
things like that. Find a list, either copying this one or creating your own, and then every single week, each time you get groceries, just kind of critique it a little bit or revise it or add a few edits in. You can even systemize this so that it's maybe financially focused so that you have it as like, here's my budget for groceries and then this is how much money I have for each section. organic food can be extremely expensive. Eating organic fruits and vegetables, specifically the ones that have been recommended to purchase organic, is actually shown to have more phytonutrients and more antioxidants in the actual fruits and vegetables. Things that are going to help your body fight against diseases or protect you against stress, just basically help your body thrive and feel nourished. Now, food that is not organic is usually farmed with things like pesticides or chemicals, and the problem with this is not only that it actually gets on the food and then if you don't wash the food it'll go into your body they put these chemicals on to increase the growth to eliminate things like pests and bacteria but the only problem is is that also gets rid of the good bacteria on these foods those chemicals and those pesticides ruin the soil and the dirt for future farming so that land you can't use it anymore and actually one third of our earth is now useless in terms of farming because of the use of things like pesticides and chemicals. So, so it's not good for our bodies, it's not good for our ecosystem or the earth. And I know that buying organic isn't totally feasible for everybody, but starting to make just small purchases here and there really makes a statement with your dollar. So the other thing to think about, which we're not gonna dive fully into in this Coast Kitchen is GMOs. In the US and Canada, the organic standards is that you're not allowed to use genetic modification in certain certified crops. So again, you're getting less GMO as well. There's actually an official list. It's called the Clean 15 and the Dirty Dozen. The Dirty Dozen are the 12 foods that you do want to invest in organic. And then the Clean 15 are foods that you can get non-organic and not worry as much. The Dirty Dozen are as follows. Strawberries are number one, so they're the top thing that we should be getting organic. Spinach is number two. Kale, collard greens, and mustard greens are number three. Nectarines are number four. Apples are number five. Grapes are number six, cherries are number seven, peaches are number eight, pears are number nine, bell and hot peppers are number 10, celery is number 11, and tomatoes are number 12. Again, I will condense those down below so you guys can have that list really easy and accessible. Now the Clean 15 are foods that you can maybe skip getting organic unless you have the extra cash flow. These include avocados, sweet corn, pineapple, onions, papaya, sweet peas, frozen, eggplants, asparagus, broccoli, cabbage, kiwi, cauliflower, mushrooms, honeydew melon, and cantaloupe. These foods or fruits and veggies are considered more clean in terms of their growth or their pesticide and chemical use. It doesn't mean that they are pesticide or chemical free by any means, but just that you don't have to focus as much on purchasing these organic, focus on the dirty 12 first. Now something you can also look into is getting your produce from local farmers, especially right now in today's era and everything that's gone on in the last year, why not support local businesses? So I did a bit of research just in the Ottawa area alone and I found that you can do something called farm shares where you basically purchase in at the beginning of the season so spring summer or fall or you can do multiple seasons and then each week you get fresh produce from a local farm if you eat meat or dairy or if you know people that eat meat or dairy in your household then you can still buy into these farm shares you can feel good about knowing that you're getting local produce and veggies but also local meat and dairy and it's not coming from like a factory farm so 
which again, topic for another time. By supporting local farmers, you're obviously putting a dollar straight into the farmer's pocket instead of the grocery store chains, one. Two, you can also feel better by having that connection with the farmer. You can ask specifically for those of you that might be picking up things like meat and dairy. Maybe some of the farmers can show you the animals or show you their living conditions so you know that they're living full, happy lives. You can also reduce plastic by bringing your own little baggies to package your fruits and vegetables or produce in while you're going to the grocery store, bringing reusable bags of course, unless you're doing things like store pickup. So that is how to build a grocery list, what foods are worth investing in organic, and some eco-friendly tips in order to keep our earth healthy and thriving while we also are healthy and thriving. If you have any requests for any future Coast Kitchen, meal preps for the week, recipes, baking, even snack nights and things like that, like showing that balance of 80-20, showing that you can eat healthy and still really enjoy it as well. And yeah, that's really my mission here. So leave any requests down below. And outside of that, I love you guys all the way to the farm and back. I'm also really happy that Coast Kitchens are back. Other than that, I'll see you guys all in the next Co's video. Bye guys.